I hear this all the time. Redbubble is so competitive. There's so many designs on there. There's no room for me. Well, is that true? Well, I'm gonna break it down in this video and I'm gonna make a case that there is room for you and there actually is room to make passive, real passive income on Redbubble. In this video, I'm gonna show some of my statistics for one of my stores that I've got on Redbubble where I've got a thousand designs uploaded and I've just simply left it alone. So I uploaded a thousand designs over the course of about two months. That was about two years ago. And now I've got a thousand designs uploaded with a thousand sales. And I haven't really done any work on it in months. So it's as passive as it gets. So in this video, I'm gonna break down five lessons learned in my thousand sale journey. Let's jump in. So my first lesson is that quantity does matter. I've got a number of different stores on Redbubble. Some are large, some are small. And I find that the larger the store, the greater the rate of favorites and the greater the rate of sales. And I know that favorites is not a direct indicator of sales. Lots of stores get lots of favorites with no sales. But it's been my experience that when you have legitimate strangers who are favoriting your work, you get more of those the larger your store gets. And you also get more sales the larger your store gets. So I regularly get a sale, I'd say every day or every second day or every third day. I certainly get one at least once or twice a week on this store. And so I think that's a direct result of having 1,000 designs. There's enough niches, there's enough different designs, there's enough different tags that it gets eyeballs on my designs. Here we can see I've got 1,000 products sold and I've got about 2,000 favorites. I've got 1.9,000, so that's 1,900 favorites. And I don't think that's a huge amount. I've seen stores with 1,000 products that have 23,000 favorites. This store, I've done zero advertising on it. These are actual people that I do not know that are favoriting my products. Now, for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna show you my products that I'm selling, but I will show my statistics over the last year. And I'm proud to say that I'm making basically passive income on here. Now, I get it, it's not a lot of money. Over the last year, I've made $600 Canadian. But again, I wanna point out, I'm doing zero work on this store now. So every month, I'm making about 20 to 30, 80, 60, 30, 73, 101 was a good month. I regularly make about 30 to $50 in this store. And again, I wanna point out, I'm doing no work on it. So I'm typically working and always building new stores, building up my portfolio. This is just one little store sitting there by itself, regularly churning out monthly income to the tune of 30 to $50 a month. So you may be wondering who's visiting my store. I wanna point out, I'm not promoting my store. I'm not paying for advertising. I do have some Pinterest buttons set up where you know people can click on a pin on a Pinterest page. But here's basically the traffic. I've got 3,500 unique visitors over the course of the last 12 months or so. And we can see here, I've got 100 visitors coming to Redbubble every month which isn't really a ton. And then we've also got organic traffic. Now, organic traffic is things like Google, Bing, Yahoo. These are search engines. And then direct just means that they're clicking on some sort of direct link. So the only real advertising I've done is Pinterest. And I haven't done it in quite some time. So maybe the pins are going out into the universe. I don't know. But I'm not getting a ton of unique visitors. You don't need to pay for promotions and advertising. And you don't need to heavily promote your store. You can do a little bit maybe on Pinterest or Facebook or whatever you want to do. I'm getting very little through social media. But I feel like when people are coming to the store, they know what they want and they're ready to buy. They're not just browsing. So you have a very good chance that when you get a visitor to your store, they're actually going to make a purchase. So I downloaded the last three months of my statistics, my sales statistics. This really leads to my second point, which is stickers matter. Don't discount stickers. So here's my statistics for the last three months on this store. And when I click on product, I can select any of the products that I've sold. So I sold quite a variety of products. But when I go to active t-shirt, for example, you'll see it's not really a ton there, right? It's not really my big seller. When I go to something like, for example, canvas print, it's even less, right? I had a couple and there's some pretty big items there, $8, $9, that's pretty cool. But when I go to sticker, we can see here, this is really where the majority of the sales are. Now I do wanna point out the, art, the artist margin is pretty low. However, you do get the occasional 20 sticker sale. I scroll on down, I can see there's three, twos, twos. So you do get occasionally the big hit. I know I sold another one that was uh, greeting cards as well. So I'll just pop that open real quick. 
greeting cards here. I sold 10 greeting cards of one item and you know, you get a two once in a while. So, you know, look, individual mileage may vary. You might have a store that's not a huge sticker store, but for me, I found that there was opportunity with stickers. A lot of the sticker designs are really crappy because they don't the artist doesn't necessarily upload a separate design for stickers. So that would be my big rep recommendation. Upload a second JPEG specifically designed for a sticker. And then number two, make sure that it's formatted properly. Because even though you're getting maybe 25 cents or a dollar for a margin, if somebody orders 20 stickers, 50 stickers, or even 100 stickers, you can really make some cool money. And especially if it's passive income, it's a nice way, nice treat to get through the email. Hey, you made a sale. My third lesson learned on my store is that emotion sells. So if I go, for example, here just to stickers and I just go to car stickers, just as an example, I'm picking something here completely at random. What are we seeing here that is a common denominator amongst all of the top trending or the top relevant designs? Hmm. Well, we can see the design quality is pretty decent, but what's more important than that? Emotion. We can see here there is something that's funny hang on let me overthink this scary boo uh, but he's actually thumbs down boo it's a play on the word boo there's kitty designs cat designs people love cats and hamsters never better it's funny so i look for things that are funny rude irreverent things that you cannot buy in a store things that indicate emotion things that really people really like or things that people really don't like if you're anti something or if you're pro something, this can be a huge selling feature. Lesson number four is to niche down. And I talk about this a lot in my videos, but I wanna show you a real life example. So this has been my experience. I've looked through the statistics on my store and I find that the more niche I can make the designs, the better. Here's an example, New York, very popular city, 300,000 results on Redbubble. And you might think, well, sure, because everybody's searching for New York not everybody. So you want to niche down to where you find a high quality design in a little tiny niche and you will make sales there because you'll have virtually no competition. I live in Canada, so I'm going to type in Ottawa. Ottawa has 19,000 results. Okay, that's still a lot of results. Hmm. Well, what about the little tiny town that I lived in when I was a kid? It's a town here called Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay's only got a thousand. Okay, we're continuing to niche down. Well, what about a little tiny town in Saskatchewan? This is a real place. A friend of mine used to live in a place called Porcupine Plain. There's 12 results. A lot of them have nothing to do with Saskatchewan and Porcupine Plain. And look at that. The result here, Porcupine Plain, Saskatchewan, a simple t-shirt design is the number one result in that entire niche. Now you might say, who cares? Nobody's buying a t-shirt for Porcupine Plain. I would disagree because it's so niche that if somebody actually lived there or knows somebody that lived there, they would buy this t-shirt. I'm living proof of this because I've got one of my best friends actually grew up here. The fact that it is rare and it is niche, it, that's the exact reason I would buy it. I'm not going to buy him a New York t-shirt, even though he's been to New York. I'm going to buy him this t-shirt because it means something to him and it's rare. The more you can niche down, the better. All right, this last lesson that I learned is a little bit controversial, but I'm going to jump in anyway. Again, you don't have to use all five of these lessons, but this last one is taking advantage of pop culture. I'm not talking about trademark design. So I'm going to show you what I don't mean first. So I'm going to type in here under the search window, 80s cartoons. Okay, and we can see we're going to get back virtually every type of copyright or trademark infringing design that you can shake a stick at. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger here. So we can see here there's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle designs. That's a violation. Garfield, that's a violation. Jam and the Holograms, great cartoon, but that's a violation. Mighty Ducks, that's a violation. Betty Boop, that's a violation. Ghostbusters, Transformers, Thundercats, Pingu, Pizza Hut. Duff Beer is off of The Simpsons. It just goes on and on. Destro, I love G.I. Joe. Oh my goodness, G-Force. I mean, this is so great, Battle of the Planets. Uh, here is the Toys R Us logo. It's just, it's copyright and trademark infringement after copyright and trademark infringement. So I'm not talking about any of this. What I'm talking about is taking advantage of things that are part of the popular culture that are not trademarked in French. So here's a great design. And you may have seen this one. It's been copied a number of times. But somebody somewhere came up with this design and I think it's awesome. It's a little floppy disk, it's a VHS tape, and it's a cassette. Now if you're a young person like a teenager, you're probably looking at this thinking, what the heck are these things? 
But if you're an old guy like me, this is a really cool t-shirt because it represents my nostalgia of things that I grew up on. Here's another one. I'm a big comic book geek, so I love the comic book's logo that is the approved by the Comics Code Authority. They don't use this anymore. It's a public domain asset. I love this design. Here's another example of something that you think might be safe but actually isn't. So do we all recognize this? Of course we do. It's off the hugely successful show Friends, which was a 90s sitcom. How you doing? Okay, well the problem is, how you doing is a registered trademark. Now, it gets complicated because the goods and services that How You Doing is providing is a downloadable podcast. It's not t-shirts and coffee mugs. So it's very possible that the trademark owner, it, it's very unlikely that they'd be able to successfully sue the owner of this design here. However, Redbubble could just take it down as soon as they get a strike. So I want to point out, I'm not a trademark attorney. I'm not saying this design is okay or not. My opinion is actually irrelevant. It's completely up to what Redbubble thinks because if this trademark attorney sends in a strike notice to Redbubble, Redbubble's just going to tear it down. They're just going to say, okay, I'm going to pull the design. It's not worth it for Redbubble to make a fight over a 25 cent sticker. I would recommend that you Google, are these slogans trademarked? Because if they are, I would just avoid them personally. It's not worth it to make eight bucks a year. It's not worth the headache. However, something like this is a really clever play on nostalgia. And I would highly recommend thinking, what are you nostalgic about from your childhood? What are you pining for thinking, huh, I wish I was a kid again? What about Saturday morning cartoons? What about internet games? Not trademarked infringing, but speaking to your past self. I hope you found this video helpful. The purpose of it is to show you that you can actually make real passive income on Redbubble. If you set up a store with good designs in good niches and you set up a thousand of those designs and none of them are going to get you strikes or a ban, then you can leave that store alone for the next 30 years and it will give you $10 a month, $20 a month, maybe even $100 a month. But hey, if it got you $30 a month every month for the rest of your life, that's like a little tiny stock that pays you a dividend. It's like a little tiny pension plan that pays you a monthly stipend. I think that's a really cool way to add value into the universe and get rewarded for it. I do believe in you, you can do it, and there is opportunity on Redbubble. I'm living proof of it, and I hope you are too. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, of course, please do hit that like button. I do appreciate that. And if you have a comment or a question, throw it down in the comments in a section below. I'd love to hear from you. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your print-on-demand journey. Thanks a lot for watching.